Right, so the final film is the remake, the 2009 Friday the 13th remake. And one thing I will say right off the bat, this film is mistreated. This is an underappreciated remake and is way better than the original. I'm looking for my sister. She's gone missing. Open up! His name. You know, I just checked on Rotten Tomatoes and it's 26%. And I don't usually check Rotten Tomatoes for anything just because I'm curious. I remember this movie coming out. I was being nine years old thinking, I want to see this. And apparently there were a lot of backlash because it, it, I don't know. But I personally like Derek Mears as the new Jason. He's scary. He's fucking terrified of him. And he uses like arrows, like green arrow runs at you f uh, like ferociously. Uses people as bait and like sets up traps and shit. This is new and a fresh different take for Jason. And I just, I don't know. People would, I don't know. Oh, man this is like another i'm on i guess this is another halloween 3 situation where a lot of people just don't really appreciate this movie granted if you like the hokiness and feel the slow burn of the first couple i get it but just unabashedly hate this movie because it's different or it does things differently despite being the same like apparently there's a lot of complaints but he's running he runs in the second movie with a sack head like I, I don't know it's it's really i've seen a lot of i guess so when i did look at ronto i did see a lot of the reviews and it was just kind of like you know messing up the original and i was like what what do you mean the original was so boring and this was a way more fun on it so including the this remake jason has killed over 200 people throughout the series including jason x or if you don't count the 20,000 people on that ship 200 is a lot now there's 12 movies if i times it by 10 more than double that's more than double what the fuck he's got a lot of people then one of which was like the most killed i didn't even look that shit up the title card of the movie isn't displayed until the end of the opening segment nearly 25 minutes into the film which is one of the longest prologues of a horror movie ever yes the first 25 minutes is kind of referencing and homaging the sort of recap for the first four and it kind of is right the first five minutes is a recap of how panel where his head is decapitated by a counselor and you actually see jason there he's alive and everything and he sees his mother gets you know dead so he decides to just go in the woods and live by alone years later a group of teenagers they're horny they start having sex they, they start getting killed and there's this one other guy like finds weed he gets killed they go to a house and that's where obviously jason lives this horny couple dies and then immediately like one of the first few kills is this woman and his sleeping body bag Omaji, the sleepy back kill, and she's like being burned up like a goddamn hog. She's like place upside down into the fire that is terrifying that is cool creative something new and terrifying and then the boyfriend gets you know hit by that, that trap like i had him saw trap by his fucking ankles and knees or not knees his ankles and immediately i'm thinking okay this jason is not only ruthless but smart he knows what he's doing and he's enjoying it so that's one thing i already like about this movie and then they find the house they get freaked the fuck out our main girl who's him i'm forgetting goes back to the camp try to help them but nope and then there's that one scene where jason cuts this guy's head off he just runs up and go bam that was awesome and then this 25 minute dialogue ends with him running at her and then because the title card probably one of the best parts about the movie honestly it's gruesome awesome tells us all we need to know about jason and man it was awesome honestly this is one of the few films that was remaked by michael bay's production company platinum dunes or platinum dooms and apparently michael bay walked out on the movie premiere stating that the movie featured too much sex so michael bay is a well-known director for directing some unique films notably for his explosions and apparently he couldn't handle like sex Scene. so this had a biggest opening weekend of a horror remake ever well i don't know if ever but it opened with 42.2 million dollars beating the original holder the grudge 2004 remake with 39.1 million everyone was really excited this is what six years later after freddy vs jason and people wanted more you know freddy vs jason but they got this and they're like yes which is why it made sense as why it made over 40 million dollars over uh, opening box weekend so there was going to be a follow-up to his movie slated for the release october 13 2017 and it was also to into production in a matter of weeks but in february 2017 it was announced that paramount had pulled the plug in order to move forward with darren's horror film mother 2017 which is also a good movie but wasn't it also because the ring failed and paramount was like oh no remakes aren't really good right now and they just pulled the plug and freaked the fuck out that's what uh, that's what i thought happened and maybe it's this as well we've gotten a 13th movie but ah uh, sadly we won't the whole fire 13 right it's in like court hell like law lawyer court hell it, it is 
a mess. Look that shit up right now as to why a Friday 13 movie isn't being made. It's still in, in oh man, it's dumb, honestly. But we're not gonna get one. We're just gonna get a lot of fan films on it. That's all. So both the mask, the hockey and the sack head mask appears in this movie. And it was all seeing him use a sack head mask and then transitioning into the hockey mask when he kills that like redneck guy. And like a cool homage. Again, the screenwriters from Freddy vs. Jason, they clearly love this franchise. And they're like, it feels like every scene they're homaging everything. Because there's like the wheelchair, the sack head, the hockey mask. There's just so many homages and love for this movie. I just, I guess people didn't see that. I don't know, man. There's a lot of homages and love and care and passion for this movie in my opinion co-writer damien shannon the character of Vo voice was re envisioned to be more like a hunter someone who doesn't kill people by random but would defend his territory for someone invading in the most hor a horrible manner and it's kind of like texas chainsaw but it's just jason Voorhees. director marcus similarly claims that the film shows new aspects of jason's personality derek mirror says his show of jason as a survivalist defending his territory is particularly inspired by the character of john rambo in first blood yeah it's like him defending his, his territory and people just coming and invading he's just killing anyone that comes by and he's more ruthless and it says like a hunter he's like a hunter he's like an arrow so they introduce these underground tunnels where jason goes in in order to like travel faster because unlike the other films he randomly just appeared off thin air but they introduced this underground tunnels and the concept was in mark wheaton's original script but mark swift damien claimed they have never read the script until the film was finished having come up with the same idea about the tunnels of their own as for the marijuana platform which jason appears to use to lower teens into traps probably no writer can claim as that as their own what the heck according to screenwriters that was actually director marcus idea from early on in the development process and it was their job to work it in the script okay sure the we thing they're learning kids sure why not i was them. but like the, the underground tunnel like spot that was a cool idea him traveling super fast also him having like bells running by the house there's one thing too he's like setting traps for himself just in case someone like invades his territory and that was awesome so obviously your boy jared padalecki is sort of the main protagonist i think he is right and he's actually from the infamous long-running sci-fi show supernatural both him and his co-star jensen ackles started in two remakes of 80 slasher films jared doing friday 13th and jensen doing my bloody valentine the reason as to why is because this was around season three and the writer strike occurred and like they had a free time right because let's see 17 18 19 20 21 22, 22 wait hold on, hold on 17 18 19 20 21 22. six weeks six episodes leads to two weeks each so that leaves like a couple of months of free time and they just decided to go do like low budget b horror movies and i think both are pretty good i do like friday team more than the my bloody valentine remake but both did extremely well oh, well i like both of them in both of their roles and i think they both did well honestly oh, this is a funny little bit Shiras van winky a wrinkle plays a character named trent yeah but this fucking character trent the same name of a character of trent from the transformers movies in 2007 which is directed michael bay according to bay himself this is the same character revealing that both this movie and the franchise occur in the same universe that sounds like a little bs and awesome think about it friday the 13th the remake alongside with transformers that is in the same universe people oh god i don't know how true that is honestly i get michael bay saying this so who knows also speaking of trent i like this character one of the complaints is that they didn't like trent he's an asshole but that's what that character is supposed to be a complete jerk and asshole and this actor travis plays him perfectly man he is just a shitbag treating his girlfriend like shit cheating on his girlfriend and that one awesome scene where he like touches her boobs like who the fuck says that who the fuck says that in real life that was like over the top just awesome the actor played him well and did his job rightly so no complaints from there oh i didn't know this this film was the first friday film to use cg weapons like a machete as some scenes were too risky to film a prop that could break and injure someone so i actually didn't notice that maybe the axe kill on the blog was cg but i did not notice the cg weapons oh maybe that one brutal ass kill one brutal ass kill by the way is the one on that asian guy and he like he has a screwdriver trying to stab jason and the jason like turns it back at him and that shot is held on for quite a bit bit and it's been brutal and it's awesome he just like slowly stabs his decade and starts killing him and himself basically and it, that shit was fucking brutal yo since Derek mirrors was really nice in reality the film girls were initially reluctant to cast him as jason so yeah one thing i wish about Derek mirrors i like him and him he's part of my is he my favorite jason that's something i have to decide my own but his neck is thick as shit yo when they, when they show him it's like god damn yo how much you working out jason it's like his neck is super fucking thick and it's like that's one thing i noticed first first time i was like god damn thick ass neck mother. i guess one thing that's sexy between Trent 
Grant and the boob girl, it's full on like softcore porn. Honestly, there's moments in this film that's like, this is basically porn. Kind of like the fifth one, A New Beginning. So let's get on with the actual movie. It opens with that 25 minute awesome scene and it cuts to Jared Padalecki's character on a motorcycle looking for his sister. His sister is the, the one that's you know, the last survivor. And usually he meets Daniel Pennebaker's character who, by the way, is just a gem in this movie. I, I like her quite a bit. She's in the flash and I as Frost, killer Frost. Her boyfriend's Trent, that asshole. They, there's also an Asian dude, a black guy. There's another couple and the boob girl. I'm gonna call it the boob girl. People played by Juliana Gill. I haven't seen her anything, but she's great. And so they go to Trent's old cabinet, which so happens to be in Jason's like territory. Apparently this is the, his parents' like house or cabinet and they never knew that Jason was around. Kind of find out hard to believe, but whatever. While they're there, we see glimpses of Jared's sister trapped because it's the reason as to why Jason didn't kill her because she looks so much like Jason's mother somehow and he sees that in her so keeps her alive there's this is locket that he sees and compares her next to her. he's like mom mother and so that's why he keeps her alive and just doesn't want to kill her again doing so Jared goes around the town everyone is giving him like the side eye and dirty look like leave this town you idiot there's this is one like redneck guy working on a workshop and then right after Jared reads him Jason shows up with a second and kills him and then he, that's the scene where he picks it up and you know has the hockey mask with that thick ass neck and then Jared obviously meets Daniel Pennebaker back at the house she for some reason leaves Trent because she probably isn't into him no more so she leaves as Jared they go around searching Trent's all mad and pissed off and I will say most of the characters are completely trash like the black and Asian they're just there partying and shit and you know they're just I guess teenagers partying and whatnot but it's just like okay I get it at least Trent's one of the apple guy so fine with that I didn't mind that at all oh yeah I guess one thing I will mention about one more about the tunnels or whatever I forgot the fuck I was gonna say that's that I mentioned the bells already I think I did right I did I'll move on from that I was gonna re repeat that again whatever forget i just said that but anyways it's like night all of a sudden and by that time those party kids are still partying and both jared and daniel panabaker they go to a house they like a wire one of the trips on a wire and jason like kind of hears and knows that and then he like carries oh one thing I, I was gonna say one more thing the couple that's like on a boat outside and he shoots an arrow on the guy's head that was also hits her head and she's hiding from him and then you know he like gets her and gets her head from the top goes back down that was an awesome kill let's go back to whatever i was gonna say it's nighttime both jared and daniel they trigger or something carrying jason's carrying the bodies back he starts freaking the fuck out looking for something there's that boobalicious moment which i might put in two clips of it honestly the shit is so fucking hilarious it's like like wow okay and so you know trent has an issue with jerry that they all try to hide there's the black guy he's out uh well actually before he kills the black guy there's that school driver scene up with the asian guy brutal as shit and then jason has an axe all of a sudden fucking throws it at like uh, you know guy's back and he he's used as bait and this is one thing again this jason is smart and like a hunter he uses this black guy as bait trying to lure him more of his friends are coming and then jared's smart he's like no gotta leave him there he's used for his bait and once jason's like all right they're not coming out they're not falling for this bait go ahead and just kills him and then everyone starts freaking the fuck out jason starts killing the boob girl he's on the roof at one point just looking up i guess a cool shot and then a cop shows up giving you know a hard time earlier i think oh no not he's giving jared a hard time he's like get out son you don't belong here so jason kills a cop in this cool like door shot jason jumps down puts an arrow in his eye you see you know the reaction from jared and danielle that was a cool shot and and then you know everyone else texts for trent daniel and jared they're left trent's gonna go along because he's an idiot both jared and daniel they go back to the house so they go save his sister jared has a feeling she's alive and then this like tow truck comes by and what's interesting about this uh scene is that you don't know if it's jason or not we haven't seen him drive yet so it's like is this jason or not and, you know he's freaking the fuck out he hasn't shown any signs of teleportation because he doesn't have teleportation and then hands like come on in Turns out it is just a random guy, and then Jason's right behind him, fucking like stabs him, I think, and puts him on, on, on the back of the tow truck. And he's like, his body looks like a dummy. He's like, truck drives off, and then he's just standing, his legs and arms just flipping around. A go Go with a die for a hilarious, awful, but great character. And so all that's left is Jared, his sister, and Danielle. They go down, they save her. Jason comes back running like a big hokey man. They run through the tunnels. They get on a bus or something at one point. I think there's like a big like car thing or whatever. And then sadly, Danielle Pennebaker dies. You know, it, it sucks because she's the one likable out of the group, right? Aside from Jared and his sister, she's the one likable one that's like an actually good character who cares about, you know, Jared and his sister. And sadly, she's got to go, sadly. 
recently. So you guys, all that's left is the brother and his sister. They go back to that one guy's tool shed thing and that's where they kill him, right? They have a chain around his neck, pull his neck in and then boom, blood comes out. It kills Jason. And then again, the Korean writers, they love this franchise. They pay an homage to mainly everything. And I think you could find everything. Like I think every movie is being homaged except for Jason X. Jason X is the best Jason movie. And then there's even the end, even the ending, they're homaging the ending of the first one where Jared and his sister are at the lake pier. Then Jason comes out and grabs her in the lake and it So the movie ends homaging the original and this was supposed to be you know supposed to have a sequel but obviously didn't so it's left kind of like the first one open-ended but also ending at the same time for all man friday the 13th 2009 is a really good movie and a really good remake and i don't know man it seems to be overlooked and underappreciated just because people love love the, the first couple ones and the original and have nostalgia for it that first one isn't good guys i'm sorry it's okay it's a dull movie until the end this one reinvents itself and actually is good and entertaining throughout but trent's awesome bad guy daniel pentagrid is like oh jared's a likable hero the sister's cool the character the rest of the characters they go fuck themselves but there's some really good and gnarly kills in this one too so yeah i don't know man i just i really like this one and hopefully people come back to it and change their minds and give it a second or third chance it is really good that's it i uh, will be doing a ranking of all these movies hopefully on the same day probably will be on the same day like eight hours from now when i release this video but it was a lot of fun hopefully i don't do another fucking franchise as long i hope i don't actually i think i will in, in december i will do a, a series of movies that's like 23 movies long but i'm getting too far ahead of myself i will be ranking these and thank you all for watching